This will review your first handout for AutoCAD 2011. I'm going to show you how to get in, so I'm clicking on Start. I type in Auto and it finds AutoCAD. It opens up for me and I'll tell you the first thing that I want you to do actually your screen will look black because by default uh, we have a black screen and I want to show you how to change the background but first just make sure you're in AutoCAD Classic you can find it here or you can click on this setting down in the status bar and switch to AutoCAD Classic so all my exercises are done with a white background so I want to show you how you need what you need to do to get yours to be a white background you need to click on tools you need to click on options and then once it opens make sure you click on the display tab if you have a check here click it so that you don't have your scroll bars it just they take up room and we don't need them come down here click on the colors button uniform background just click and change that to white you'll find that your grid is very dark and so I've come in here and I've clicked here and gone into select color and then it's by default about here and I just made it lighter and said OK. So I, I changed my major grid lines and I changed my minor grid lines by doing the same steps. Select color, clicking way up here in the grayscale and saying OK. And apply and close and OK. And this is much easier to work with. I'm not sure on this screen capture how well you can see, but I have light gray grid lines here. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set my I'm actually going to come here and ask you to make sure your dynamic input is off for now uh, when we begin because we're going to learn a lot through this command line and it makes it difficult to get started if you have this on because I want you to keep your eyes on this command line and see what's happening. So I'm going to type uh, UN enter and I get this dialog box and since my hands are on the keyboard I want to tell you you can see that decimal is highlighted up there. I could click that drop down list but it's faster for me to press the letter A and it will change to architectural. That's all I need here, so I can click OK, but with my hands on the keyboard, I'm just going to press Enter, and that accepts those settings. I've set my units. I'm going to set my limits, so I'm typing into the command line down here. I hope you saw that. Press Enter. It asks me down in the command line, specify lower left corner, 0, 0. That is what... I want. If you see decimals here, you, right now you can see the little foot and inch symbols. That's because I'm in architectural units. If you don't see that, if you see decimals, it means you didn't set your, your architectural units. We will always accept 00, zero as our lower left corner. So all you need to do to accept is press your enter key on your keyboard. It's it's asking us to designate a space uh, that it can display. AutoCAD can display an amazing uh, amount of space in front of you. Right now it's set to one feet. So this one foot across and nine inches high, which would be fine if we were drafting a little tiny mechanical piece that was you know maybe two inches by three inches high but in architectural we need more space and I'll explain later how I get these numbers uh, but we're going to use 44 feet comma 34 feet and enter so we have 
told it the drawing space that we need. We want 44 feet wide and 34 feet high. That first number is uh, x, so 44 feet across of drawing space and 34 feet up, sort of measured from our 0, 0. But right now, we don't know that we're zoomed into that space, so we, we need to do that. I'm going to type Z and press Enter. And I want zoom all, which is that first choice. I don't have to type the whole word. All I need to type is whatever letter is capital. And so you can see the A is capitalized. So that tells me just type the A. Don't bother typing more. And then press Enter. And it does a zoom all for me. So I've set my units and my limits and did a zoom all. If you're a real menu type of person, you can come through the format menu for units and limits. It will take you to the same place. Now I am going to come down here to the status bar and I'm going to ignore those two and you can see my grid is on. If I click this, my grid goes off. I do want it on and I'm going to right click and go into my settings and I want my grid, whether I'm zoomed into a, do a little detail, I always want these intersection points to be one foot across. That's going to give me a visual orientation for me when I'm drawing. This will always be one foot. So I need to tell it that. I need to come in here and say, okay, I could type one foot, but I hate typing that little foot symbol. It's not fast. So uh, 12 inches is one foot. And then if I click here, it will take this value and put it there. But it also has converted it to, to one foot, which equals 12 inches. Always turn this adaptive grid off. I have no idea who uses this. But what it means is that if I zoom in and I have adaptive grid on, my grid is going to get more spaced out or more condensed and I totally don't want it to do that. I only want it always to be one foot apart. So take that off. And I'll say OK. So I have my grid set up and I am going to come over here, two more over. My polar tracking is on right now, um, and I do want it to be on, but I also want to make sure I have the angle set that I want. We'll get more on this in the next lesson. But for now, you're going to right click, and you, we want this 45. We have this handy dandy little thing in this new version, which is fine. We can just click here, but if we were to go in the settings just to show it to you, I would be coming in here and picking 45. And I will say OK. And I believe that if you have set your units, your limits, your zoom all, set your grid, set your polar angle to 45, then we're all ready to go. If you're unsure if you did all those, you can just retype units have a look, it looks good, enter, retype limits, enter, zero, zero's right, just enter, enter, yep, we're all ready to go.